Lacrosse Legends. Lacrosse Legends, a comprehensive look at America's greatest game featuring legends past, present, and future. Today on Lacrosse Legends, we speak with retired Colonel Daniel Williams and Brigadier General Amuso George, alumni of the United States Military Academy at West Point. United States Military Academy, also known as West Point, a four-year federal service academy located in West Point, New York. The oldest of the five American service academies and educates cadets for commissioning into the United States Army. Retired Colonel Daniel E. Williams, Brigadier General Amuso D. George, both Hempstead High School graduates, both played lacrosse, both West Point graduates. Cross Legends met with the gentleman along with former Hempstead High School coach Al Hodish and spoke about their experiences. I want to say thanks for, for inviting Danny and I out here. Definitely humbled that you thought of us. A guy like Danny, I look up to him. Kind of paved the way for you guys like me coming behind him. It means a lot to me. Sports did expose us to the other people, for lack of a better word, that were out there, whether they were Hispanic, Caucasians. Sports allowed us to see that and also go into communities and see the things that were out there and get a good understanding of things that we would like to become like. We could become anything we wanted to, but we had to work hard at it and part of that came from the sports part of that came from academic those things for me stuck hard because I wanted to play the sports but I also knew that the academics had to be there because sports would go away and it was going to be a life after that my exposure to you guys did a lot to help motivate me give me things to aspire to and also to see things that I wanted out of life in the said late 70s and into the 80s when I was coming through the high school there was a there was a great sense of pride in Hempstead we had a really strong community a lot of working class families middle class all of the parents in our neighborhood knew their neighbors they knew their parents there was a strong sense of community and there was a sense of pride a lot of the pride certainly was in the sports and athletics programs the real job I had as a as a young adult was the summer youth employment program where I was a counselor with some of the younger kids and then doing some other things during the school year like going out early lying in the fields running game clocks for the basketball leagues and youth leagues Danny hit on something with the academics in my house there weren't any sports being played and there might be some restrictions if you didn't do the academics that's to be sure. My mom set the foundation for working really hard in school and then everything else follows suit with that. There were high expectations for academic excellence. When we went out and competed against other school districts in athletics, whatever other communities might say about Hempstead, there was certainly at least some grudging respect and recognition for the sense of pride, the pursuit of excellence that was going on in the community at that time. I never personally experienced consistent, outright racist behavior or remarks coming from other communities. When I was at West Point, for some of my classmates who may have been from the New York area, Long Island, they were certainly aware of Hempstead's reputation as a real athletic powerhouse. There were kids who could recite off 
the names of some of our top athletes because they were following them as well. Warren Stiff, Rob Moore, Moses Santos. From time to time, you would hear comments, you know, trying to allude to the fact that, hey, it's predominantly black communities. The first time something did happen to me, it was in high school. In an athletic event, guys say stuff to each other out there on the field, but you don't try to be hurtful. I have had, on occasion, someone would say something. Fortunately, in most of those cases, we were winning, and that's where it would come out. My reply back was, look at the score. While I did hear comments here and there, I won't say it was widespread, but I can say, as Amuso said, we were well-respected from the standpoint that we were athletes and we could compete on any stage, at any level, whether it was basketball, football, lacrosse, track, wrestling. When you went to the county championships or the state championships, we had representation there, where some of those schools, they didn't. At the end of the game, I made it a point, a little smirk, but I would shake the hands. The best thing you can do for someone like that is treat them with kindness. They made us like even more because of that. But you know what? You're on the higher ground. I would say that was taught, combination of my upbringing home-wise, but also from my coaches. Our coaches knew that we were gonna go into those environments and they prepared us for it. They would say, you guys are gonna have to be in your bed to here because you know if something happens, it's gonna come back down to you guys. You go out there, you leave it on the field, and at the end of the day, if the score reflected it, and more times than not, we could still hold our head high. Senior high school, eighth grade, played football, actually for you coach, at the end of the season, you came over to me and said, why don't you come out and uh, do a indoor lacrosse with us during the winter and then come out for the spring. At that time, I think I had seen all of maybe two or three lacrosse games and that was said while it was widespread in within him said I did not play. Started in eighth grade, played that winter, and then I actually started for you as a defenseman for that eighth grade season. After that, that was all she wrote because I found a sport that I love. I love track, I loved running. It combined all those things that I loved and put it into one sport. I excelled out on the field. You were my lacrosse angel. <laughs> you introduced it to me. You were very skilled and very athletic. I remember coming in after the first week of practice and said, Danny, I want to take you up to the uh, varsity. So uh, Monday, you'll be out on the field with us. And you were really reluctant. I mean, I almost saw tears in your eyes. I'm not ready, coach, please, not yet. And so I said, Danny, I'll see you Monday on the field. And like you say, the rest is history. Next on Lacrosse Legends. You're watching Lacrosse Legends. I had four things that I was looking for in a school. I wanted to be an engineering school. I wanted to play division one lacrosse. I wanted to still be close to home. There may have been like one other item in there. It checked all of my boxes for going other than the fact that it was the military. I had never thought about even going into the military. As I began to do my research on it, it reached out to me. The discipline, the camaraderie, those things stood out for me. I was disciplined in knowing that I needed to do my academic. Time management was there. My biggest thing was it was still going to be, am I going to be happy there? And I saw it was an environment that I thrived in, that I enjoyed. Now, at the academy, on, on the other hand, you know what? I had to work. I wasn't one of those guys who could just go to class and walk out and next day remember everything. I had some long nights. I worked from an academic standpoint. Mathematics, I thrived in. My degree was in operations research as a math major. I loved it. If I could have just 
stayed in math, that would have been great. It was those other things that I had to work at. Those are the things that made me who I am. It gave me a well-rounded education. It exposed me to many things. And I got to travel. The Army, you get to, you get to travel, as a Muso can attest to. <laughs> I guess like Danny, I initially did not imagine that I'd be pursuing a career. The service academies were not part of my initial look. It's a prestigious national university, very competitive. They're looking for a scholar, athlete, leader. It piqued my interest. Actually, all of the service academies piqued my interest at that time. And I really wanted to go to West Point. At that time, my lacrosse coach was uh, Coach Chuck Sherwood, my junior and senior year. Chuck Sherwood's talking to me about, I uh, expressed the interest in West Point. Well, hey, we got a, we got a graduate here. Eddie Williams is at the academy. He's a defenseman. And so that's kind of where it's like, okay, academically, I feel like great opportunity here. Athletics, you know, perhaps pursue the opportunity to play lacrosse. The notion of being commissioned as an officer in the United States Army at 16, 17 years old and what that meant, knowing that there would be opportunities was also part of the lore of going to West Point. I was very excited when I got my admissions letter. I don't want to be getting in anyone to feel sorry for you by saying, oh, Columbia was my second oh, choice. Right. And it certainly didn't help to be the valedictorian. I'm trying to follow in the footsteps of Danny. One, one reality that I faced was actually, I had an injury. I had a shoulder. So I had a shoulder reconstruction at the beginning of my second semester freshman year. That threw me off track for pursuing lacrosse. No, I got a uh, kick out of one of the photos you sent me. You play club lacrosse at Kansas State, Kansas State University, and there's three of you guys, you're in the middle, and a chopper behind you. That's one of the great things with sports. Start playing younger in life, you kind of integrate it into your life. Danny talked about playing on a club team. Army officers, a lot of folks, obviously, who played lacrosse at West Point or played somewhere else would often play in the club leagues in and around the Midwest. I had the opportunity to play during that particular picture. I coordinated with some tenants who were stationed at Fort Riley. One of them was an aviator. And after a tournament, we were able to get the UH-1, bring the fly the helicopter down there and land the team with some pictures with the helicopters. That was pretty neat. Danny, you had a stellar career at West Point in the NCAA playoffs. You guys were in during your tenure, three out of your four years. You your coach was Jack Emmer. Tell me about the relationship with Coach Emmer. When I was at Academy, I was, at that time, Emma was actually the coach of Washington and Lee, and I got recruited into Academy to Cadell. My freshman year at the Academy, you go there early and during the summer, you do your summer training, it was announced that Adele was leaving and that there was going to be another coach. And at that time, they hadn't announced it, so everyone was waiting for it. Finally found out it was going to be Jack Emma. It scared the <laughs> out of me. <laughs> and partly because while being recruited out of high school, Coach Emma kept trying to get me to come to Washington Lee, Washington Lee. And I, I didn't know, he was such a really good guy and I didn't know how to tell him. I didn't want to use one of my visits to go to Washington Lee, that I wasn't going to be a school that was going to be my choice. I didn't call and let him know where I was going. So I'm thinking he's going to wail on me or you know, I didn't know what to expect or what was going to come out of his mouth. When he came there the first day, Coach Emma comes walking up. What am I going to say to this guy that I didn't, I didn't call up and let him know where I was going? He comes over to me, he reaches out, he goes, he goes, Dan Williams. And I go, Coach Emma. And then he goes, you know what? I think you made the perfect choice in where you should go to school. He goes, because now I get to coach you. Started out that way, it's an incredible relationship with them, both on a personal level and also just as a coach. And it's great when you can have that intermingling. Coach M was a really intuitive guy and he cared for the players genuinely both on and off the field. My freshman year, I had a thing that happened that affected me. He could tell, I didn't want to tell anyone. I didn't think I was showing it. I go to practice. He pulls me aside at the end of practice. He goes, Dan, what's going on? And I'm like, what do you mean, coach? He goes, something's going on. He goes, I can tell, and I know you better than this. So what's occurring? Well, I sat down with him. I explained what was going on. He let the two team captains know what was occurring. It was something that he says, I, I just want you guys to watch out for him. He's going through a little bit of a rough period right now. Here's the situation. What just struck me was that, once again, from the personal level, he reached out. So he could be a compassionate guy, but he could be complete opposite on the field. He was a demanding coach he made sure you played to your potential he was this 
the big whiz kid with lacrosse in terms of trying to figure out new ways to do people. And this was just when defensive midfield w- were getting started. He put me in that defensive midfield position and I played on a 10-man ride. The unfortunate thing about it was that it caused me to have to do a whole lot of running. The one thing he could depend on me for was, was being able to uh, run people down and or, and or assist in that area. He's an incredible coach. I still stay in touch with him to this day. We talk on occasion and he's also someone that I continue to reach out to. He was a big source of support and, and as I said, just a, a really, really good guy. The kind of coach that any kid would want at any age level. Next on Lacrosse Legends. You're watching Lacrosse Legends. season assignment it was Germany lived in a city called Bad Korsnot Germany not too far from Frankfurt it's home of first armor division headquarters over in Germany this is mid to late 90s I went to Germany initially thinking hey three years and then I'll be going back to the United States long story short I ended up staying six years in Germany because I extended twice the three years in Bad Korsnot I went to a uh, city Beautiful city in Germany called Heidelberg, Germany. Uh, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, I was a financial manager for them in uh, Baghdad. In Afghanistan for a year where I ran into Danny. It was actually a NATO position in supporting the training efforts for the Afghanistan National Security Defense Forces there. One thing I will say when you have had the opportunity for a posting outside of the continental United States and overseas, it offers a great perspective because as an American on the outside looking in, you get this, a different perspective of things going on at home. And then you also get an opportunity to interact with our partners and allies. What most struck me in, um, in my assignments overseas is all of our partners and allies, they really kind of look to the United States. So uh, they, they, in many cases, they kind of take their lead from the United States in many of these uh, the missions and, and efforts going on around the world. So you get a real good appreciation for that. In saying that, you get a really good appreciation for what it means to be an American and understanding some of the blessings and the benefits we have. Some overseas assignments, obviously great opportunities for travel. And then other overseas assignments where we were literally in a war zone, very challenging and risky. Just over halfway through a year-long tour in Afghanistan, I was stationed in Kabul, Afghanistan, on a small U.S. Uh, posting, posting there. I found out about there was going to be a Founders Day recognition on another small installation in the city. I, I was a colonel at the time, there were multiple general officers in there. In fact, General Dunford retired last year as the chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff at the time. He was commander of U.S. forces in Afghanistan. He was there, he made an appearance. Lieutenant General Gall was there, who played, I think he played lacrosse for Army when he was at the academy. We're in the room, I'm looking around the room doing my scan, and I see what appears to be a familiar face. I'm like, man, I think I know that guy. He sure looks familiar. You know, so I'm looking, and I'm looking, and then out of nowhere, you know, I just come to the realization, holy cow, that's Danny Williams. <laughs> One of the most wonderful moments in tour. It was certainly the highlight of that day for me. Just it, the fact of us two being there, Hempstead High School graduates, you know, West Point graduates, senior army officers who had had successful careers. It's almost like coming full circle. That was, Something that was unexpected that day. One of the most wonderful things that I always remember from my tour in Afghanistan. The chances of two Hempstead High School graduates meeting in the middle of a war zone as senior army officers there affecting what's, what was going on in the world. We actually look like two brothers standing there in every sense of the word, mirror images. Other than the fact that actually at that time, he had a full bird colonel on his rank. He surpassed me. I was only a lieutenant colonel. For me, 
It was also actually a pretty moving experience from the standpoint that Amuso talks about how he looked up to me. Part of making the decision was going to the academy and wanting to emulate some of that, still be his own person but just having a mentor or someone who could be in that position. Now here you have a case where the mentee switches to the mentor. To me, that meant the world. To have inspired someone to go that route. Shortly after that, I got promoted to Colonel. So at least for a little while, we got to share the same rank as Colonel. But then he ended up one up me and go get his star. He is very much an inspiration to me these days. I feel proud about that. Congratulations, and I'm sure we're gonna hear a lot more great things about you. I appreciate that. I'm at a loss for words, and I appreciate that. What do you say to a young man who is considering a career in the military? It has to be your decision. You're only going to be successful at the things that you really, really enjoy. You have to have that sense of duty to country to be successful there. And also, once again, to enjoy it. One of the best decisions I've made in my life. It propelled me to who I am today. You're outstanding Roma. Thank you for a great day. Tigers, Tigers for life. life. Thank you for everything. Appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity. It was great to talk to you guys today. On behalf of Seth Cannon and Bernard Williams, this is Monsanto Muzak for Lacrosse Legends.